Hey guys, we are back with the course. Last time we learned about conditions, and this time we're going to be learning about inputs, um, which is actually a um, something from the Unity namespace. So they give you a really easy way to check what inputs you're pressing on the keyboard or the mouse, and we're going to be learning about this today because we have to start doing our snake game um, quite soon. We've been playing around with scripts, but I think we should actually start making our game as soon as possible so you guys can actually see something, see some result, and that is something that is going to drive you to continue basically. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just, um, I think I'm going to get rid of this first script. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go inside of my game scene. Just make sure we are in our game scene. This is where we want our logic to happen. And we're going to start um, just writing down our snake. I'm just going to make sure that the scene is clean. So I'm going to be removing these three sphere. I'm going to be creating a new cube object and that cube rename it to snake. What I've done to rename is simply, um, I had it selected, I press on F2, which is just like in uh, the Windows Explorer, so you have the option to rename it using F2. Now I'll be moving this snake in the middle of my world for now, and we're gonna go ahead and just create a new C-sharp script. So create, and this one is gonna be the snake. Okay, so what exactly do we want our snake to do? We want our snake to move depending on where we click on the screen. Well, not click on the screen, but click on the keyboard. So basically, if I press on W, I want the snake to go up. If I press on S, I want it to go down, left and right, and so on. So here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna be wiping everything. This is something I do in uh, quite a lot of tutorials, so if you, if you wanna keep on watching some of my tutorials, this is something I do all the time. I just start super fresh, um, no, no start, no update function, and then we just add in manually, which is just going to help you just write them down, um, become faster with the keyboard. And here's what I do. So I create my update. Now we're going to be looking for inputs. So we're going to be looking for key press. The moment you press on the key, some condition somewhere in the code is going to actually turn to true. So some boolean is actually going to toggle on and off, so true or false. And uh, checking for those inputs has to be done in a update. The reason is quite simple. If you start your game, if you have, like, say, a private void start here, by the way, don't mind the private just now, we're going to be talking about um, private and public a little bit later on, but say if I go up here and I type in if um, my A key is pressed, then this is going to work only for a single frame at the very beginning of your game. Um, you're only going to be checking this condition once, so it's not continuous, it's not something that you check every frame. You're really only checking that moment, that very first frame the game start. Was your key down or up? Which is, um, I mean, it, it's really, you have to be really good in timing if you want to enter that if statement. So whenever you do key checks, whenever you do input checks, most of the time is going to be done in a update. Let's go ahead and just have a look at the syntax here. You go like this, so you have your if statement, normal if statement, just like we saw in the last episode, but inside of brackets, instead of typing in true or false, we write down input dot get key. Now you have a get key, you have a get key down, and you have a get key up. I will explain them in a second, but let's just do get key down. And then inside of another set of parentheses, you're going to be using key code and then whatever key you want. Now you don't see them in my screen, but if you press dot uh, in yours, you're going to be seeing a list of all the keys. You can type in A. Um, B, C, all the keys on the keyboard, alpha 1, alpha 2, which are the one at the very top, your um, actual numpad on top of your keys. So let's start simple. I'm going to say key code um, W. So if my key is down, my W key is down, then I'll be running this code. So debug.log, just to test this out, of course, move up. Okay. Let's go back in our game and make sure that our script, our component, is actually on top of our snake, so uh, our update is actually ran during the game. And if I just press play, press on W, it says move up. Now if I hold W, I'm holding it right now, you would expect this to be spamming nonstop because every single frame we're looking and um, if the W key is down, then we're going to go ahead and just say that. But it doesn't work this way. We have three functions we have to play with. We have get key down, get key, and also get key up. Get key down is only toggled once when you press on the key. So if I was to spam it like this, it happens every single time I press on the key. During that first frame that the key is actually down, 
then this is true. Now on the next one, it's not true anymore because my key was not just press. If I wanted to get a continuous um, stream, I would simply say get key. Now this way, if the key is down, it's going to return through and I can go ahead and just click in old this time. And as you can tell, it just keeps going um, on and on and on. Now you can actually do it the other way around too. So you can say get key up and then I'm going to be pressing on my key, holding it. So pressing, holding, and whenever I release my key, now, then calls um, the if statement. But it only happens when I release my key. So get key up is when you release, get key down is when you first press it, and get key is just to get the state in general. Is it pressed or is it not pressed? In our case, um, let's do get key down for now. I know the snake is actually something that should actually keep moving on and on, but right now, just for the sake of this tutorial, just to have some kind of movement going at the end, I'm going to be using get key downs for every single axis. So let's duplicate this four times because we have four directions. Uh, we have get key down A, we have get key down S, and we have get key down D. On A, we're moving left, on S, we're moving down, and on D, we're moving right. Now, how do we go about moving our snake already? We need the transform. We are going to declare it right away. So let's go to the very top, declare our transform, snake transform, and in a private void start, I'll just assign it. So I'll just say snake transform is equal to get component type of transform. Now, I'm a bit tired of doing this. Um, I'm going to show you a shortcut that you can use actually Get component transform is um, is really a long way to do it. You can actually type in transform with a small t at the beginning, and it is going to return your transform. I don't know if I explained this in the past, but maybe I have. Um, if I'm doing it twice, sorry about that. Um, but basically, just typing in transform with a t is going to return your transform, the one that is on your object. So like this is going to work, and now. Um, Every time I press on the key, so every time I press on get key down W, I would say snake transform dot position is plus equal vector three dot up because basically I want this to go up since you know W is up. <laughs> and now um, let's do that for the left side. Uh, we'll actually leave the uh, debug dot log as well just so we can have a look at it. So we said snake transform dot position is plus equal. Let's not forget the plus equal. It's really important to take the current position and just add to it vector3.up. Going to go ahead and just duplicate this. This is vector3.left and then vector3.down or if you prefer minus up, this could also work. And finally, vector3.right. So just by using these condition we should now be able to move using our inputs. So right now my cube doesn't move, however, you know, it's in an update. Um, all my conditions are inside of a update. So we're constantly checking, are we pressing on any key? So let's go ahead and just say, I'm going to be pressing on D a few times. As you can tell, I'm now moving in all the direction. And if you have a look at the console, I'm just using all my keys right now. So we finally got some basic movement going on. Um, of course, this is not really the snake movement. Now, I know the snake movement is not actually like that in the real game, and uh, we're going to be fixing it. We're going to be making it perfect by the end of the tutorial. But right now, we have some basic movement, and I think we're going to start um, here, and we're just going to leave it like that for now, because we need to have a time notion before we actually do that continuous movement. Now, um, what I'm going to talk about next doesn't really relate to the snake tutorial, but it relates to the input. We're going to go a bit uh, further because um, inputs are something that you're going to be using quite a lot in all the games you do. So let's just talk more about it because there's obviously more to know about it. If we just forget about this for now, we're going to leave it on, but I just want to have a space of code down here that I can actually test some stuff out with you guys. In Unity, there is something else in the input manager called axes. Now I'm going to show them to you right here because they're actually stored in your game. If you go under edit, project settings, and then input, inside of the input manager, you're going to have axis. And there is quite a lot of them by default, horizontal, vertical, fire one, two, three, jump, mouse. And there is quite a lot of stuff in there. Now what a axis is, 
is actually a type of input that returns you a float. Let me just explain it a little bit. So over here on horizontal, we're gonna have a look at the horizontal, which is one of the most used. There is actually a negative button and a positive button at all times. So uh, most of the axis is going to have like a negative button, positive button. If you press on the negative button and you just hold it for a while, it's going to return you minus one. Now, if you press on the positive button and you hold it for a while, it's going to return you one. So you always have that range of values in between minus one and one. Now this is really seen just like a float values and it is really useful for um, inputs that are not just like buttons. So if you take like a, any, any controller, I have one laying around here, um, if I can just find it. So any controller like this, like a Xbox controller, um, you have your button, so that's simple, get key up, get key down, we already done that. But there is also this thing here, the joystick. Now the joystick is a little bit different because um, it's not a simple get key up, get key down, knowing if we put our joystick towards the left or the right. You actually have like some values in between. So if I just tilt it a little bit towards um, this side, it's not actually just one, you know, it's like 0 0.5 and if I go all the way, then that's one. You have some values in between and this is where the axis come in really handy because they give you values in between minus one and one. So you might end up with minus 0 0.5 or um, 0 0.75. And here is how you actually handle them in Unity. You go like this, you do input get axis and you have to give it a string. Now the string that you put inside of here is actually the name of the axis. So if we were to say horizontal, just like this, we have to type it the same exact way else it's not gonna work. This is actually returning you a float. Now let's go ahead and just do a debug.log of that float. Now when I play my game, I don't, I'm not pressing on anything right now. As you can tell, it keeps telling me zero because my horizontal axis is in the middle. So it's really just like this, it's in the idle state. If I was to press on any positive or negative um, button, it would go either up to one or down to minus one. Now in this case, I'm just gonna be using this um, joystick here. In this case, let's have a look at our horizontal axis on the right hand side. It has a negative button and a positive button, left, right, A and D, which is also some alternate negative buttons um, or positive buttons. Now let's just imagine that left would be pushing my joystick towards the left all the way. And right would be pushing my joystick all the right, um, on the right, all the way. Now, um, don't think about the y axis. Just imagine that this was like a simple x line, only for the x axis. So we're not talking about up and down, only left and right. If I press on the negative button, so if I tilt my joystick towards one side, here's what happens. I'm going to be using my my arrow keys here. I don't know if you guys saw it. It start gradually moving up towards minus one. And now if I use my right, so if I tilt this toward this side, it goes up to one. And right now I'm only using my keys on the keyboard. The reason I'm doing this is because my horizontal axis, this axis is actually set on left and right, which is equal to arrow left and arrow right. So the, the, your actual arrow keys. I could be using A and D at the same time, but as you can tell, I'm also moving my snake because of the other condition above it. So I just wanted to mention those, I just wanted to mention those axes because they're gonna be useful in the end. Um, whenever you do watch the other tutorials such as the input manager that I've done, you're gonna be learning how to actually implement this thing in your Unity game, then um, you're gonna be creating some axes. So you're gonna go up here and say, say uh, 19, your last axis is gonna be your joystick axis. You're gonna give it your own positive and negative button which are going to be like joystick axis. Um, you know, you just play around with those settings. I have another video that explains all of that. And you can actually get your float values in between minus one and one, which is going to help you just determine the speed at which your player goes or, you know, any kind of logic is possible from there. But I just wanted to mention those and I am not gonna be using those in the snake game, but at least now we have a little introduction on how they work. And I'm actually going to end today's episode here because we need to talk about time and time is um, the topic for the next episode. The reason we want to talk about time is so every say one second we have um, our snake moving in one of the direction depending on where our key are. So we are going to be talking about that in the next episode. Um, have a look for it. If you enjoyed this one, if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that quite a lot. 
Also check out the Facebook page, the Patreon page, the website. You know, all that kind of stuff. Check out the channel, a lot of good video in there. And also subscribe for more. Guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.